Welcome to this complete guide on journal entries in Odoo. If you're looking to understand how journal entries work, how to manually create them, and how they fit into Odoo's accounting system, you're in the right place. By the end of this video, you'll be able to create and manage journal entries like a pro. We'll also cover real-world examples to help you understand how debits and credits work. Make sure to like and subscribe for more Odoo tutorials. Now, let's get started. What are journal entries in Odoo? In simple terms, a journal entry is a formal record of a financial transaction. Odoo follows the double entry bookkeeping system, which means every transaction has at least one debit and one credit. The total debits must always equal total credits. These individual debits and credits inside the journal entry are called journal items in Odoo. For example, let's say a company purchases office supplies worth $500 using cash. This transaction affects two accounts. Office supplies expense debited $500 because expenses increase with a debit. Cash account credited $500 because cash is decreasing. In Odoo, there are numerous operations that can lead to the creation of a journal entry, such as customer invoices, payments, vendor bills, bank statements, stock moves, payslips, etc. Creating a manual journal entry in Odoo Odoo automates most journal entries, but there are times when you need to create one manually, for example, adjusting balances at the end of the year, correcting a previous transaction, setting up opening balances when migrating to Odoo. To access journal entries in Odoo, follow these steps. Open the accounting module. Go to journal entries under the accounting menu. Here, you'll see a list view of all existing journal entries. By default, Odoo filters journal entries based on the miscellaneous journal. You can adjust the filter to view entries from sales, purchases, or bank transactions. Click the Create button to open a form view and begin a new entry. On the next screen, you will be prompted to fill in the following fields. When creating a journal entry in Odoo, several key fields must be filled in to ensure accurate accounting records. Let's break down these fields with explanations and practical examples. Draft or number. This is an automatically generated unique identifier for the journal entry. It is based on the following elements. The short code of the selected journal, e.g. MISC for miscellaneous journal. The year and month of the accounting date. A sequential record number for that period. For example, if you create a new journal entry in the miscellaneous journal in July 2025, and the last recorded entry for that period was number 0050, the next journal entry would be miscellaneous slash 2025 slash 07 slash 0051. This numbering system helps keep journal entries organized and easy to track. Reference. This is a description or identifier for the journal entry. It helps users understand the purpose of the entry when reviewing financial records. The reference appears on the journal entry and helps with reporting. For example, if you are recording salary payments, the reference might be July 2025 salary expenses. If you are making an adjusting entry for depreciation, the reference could be depreciation adjustment for office equipment, July 2025. Providing a meaningful reference makes it easier to locate and understand journal entries in the future. Accounting date. This is the official date on which the journal entry is recorded in the system. It determines the financial period to which the transaction belongs. By default, it is set to the current date, but it can be changed to match the actual transaction date. For example, suppose a company purchases office supplies on July 28, 2025, but the accountant records the transaction on August 2, 2025. The accounting date should be set to July 28, 2025 to reflect the actual expense period. If a business follows an accrual accounting method, ensuring that journal entries are dated correctly is crucial for accurate financial statements. Journal. A journal is a category that groups similar types of financial transactions. Every journal entry must be assigned to a specific journal. Example of different journals in Odoo. Miscellaneous journal. Used for manual journal entries, adjustments, or one-time records. Sales journal. Records all sales transactions, e.g., customer invoices. Purchase journal. Records all purchase transactions, e.g., vendor bills.
Bank Journal. Used for bank transactions such as deposits and withdrawals. Cash Journal. Tracks cash transactions. For example, if you are manually recording a salary expense entry, you might select Miscellaneous Journal. If you are recording a customer payment, you might select Bank Journal to reflect the bank deposit. In the Journal Items tab, you will add journal item lines. You will always need a minimum of two lines, at least one for debit amounts and at least one for credit amounts. Click the Add a Line button to add a journal item line. You will be prompted to fill in the following information. Account. This is the general ledger, GL, account that will be debited or credited. Every journal item must have an account assigned to it. You select this from a drop-down menu that contains your chart of accounts. For example, if you are recording a salary payment, you might choose Account, Salaries Expense, Operating Expenses, 601000 for the debit entry. Account, Bank Account, Assets, 101000 for the credit entry. This ensures the correct financial impact is recorded. Partner. The partner field is used to associate the journal item with a customer, vendor, or employee. This is helpful for tracking transactions related to specific entities. It is optional but recommended for transactions involving third parties. For example, if you are paying a vendor invoice, partner, ABC Supplies Limited, vendor from whom you purchase goods. When checking the vendor's account balance, this transaction will appear under their records. Label. A brief description for internal reference. It helps users understand what this entry is for. For example, if you are recording rent payment for July, you might enter label office rent, July 2025. This description makes it easier to review and audit transactions later. Analytic account, used for tracking expenses or revenues by department, project, or cost center. Helps with cost allocation. This is optional but beneficial for analytical reporting. For example, if you are recording an expense related to a marketing campaign, analytic account, marketing budget, 2025. Later, you can analyze how much was spent under marketing budget, 2025. Analytic tags, similar to analytic accounts, but more flexible. You can assign multiple tags to categorize transactions across different dimensions. For example, for a software subscription expense, you might add analytic tags, IT expenses, SaaS tools. This helps when filtering reports based on different expense categories. Debit, the amount being debited in the journal entry. Leave blank if this is a credit entry. For example, if you are recording an office rent payment of $2,000, debit $2,000 to the rent expense account. This increases your expenses in the profit and loss report. Credit. The amount being credited in the journal entry. Leave blank if this is a debit entry. For example, for the same office rent payment. Credit. $2,000 from the bank account. This reduces the bank balance. Continue adding as many journal items as needed. When finished, make sure that the totals of the debit and credit amounts are equal. When ready, hit the Save button. You will notice that the entry has not yet been posted and is in the draft or unposted state. This adds another step of validation before actually posting the entry to your journal and gives you time to ensure that everything has been entered correctly. When the entry is complete and correct, click the Post button to commit the entry and change the status to Posted. Once your journal entry has been posted, it will be included by default in the accounting and financial reports, such as the General Ledger Report. I hope you all have a clear understanding of the concepts covered in this video. If you have any questions or queries, feel free to leave a comment below. For more support, please subscribe, share, and like the video. And don't forget to click the bell icon to stay updated on my latest releases.